Hello my friends, Stephanie here and I'm back with more movie chatter. And the video that I have for you today is the one that you guys picked. I put a, uh, a poll out on the community tab uh, if you wanted to see my Criterion pickups or you wanted to see the 4K review for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, which will be coming in a future video. Uh, but this is what you picked. You want to see my Criterion pickups for the Barnes & Noble slash Amazon 50% off sale, which is still going on. And if you haven't been able to pick up or you're still looking to pick up a few titles, definitely keep an eye on Amazon because they're doing some really competitive price matching. And some of the prices are even lower than Barnes & Noble. And if things are out of stock on Barnes & Noble, uh, you can pretty much rest assured you can find them on Amazon. So I'm just going to get right into my pickups so this doesn't run any longer than it needs to. Uh, my first one is Spine Number 1051. It's a film directed by David Lynch. It stars Anthony Hopkins and John Hurt in The Elephant Man. Now this one came out in uh, about 1980 and I think that was the first time I watched it. I was in around 8th eighth grade maybe freshman year in high school and I was so upset by this movie I was so disturbed couldn't get it out of my head and I didn't know that it was a real movie I think I watched it on cable I didn't know it was about a real person and I couldn't believe what they were showing and this is a story of John Merrick who was born with these th this terrible condition where he is completely his face his body his spine everything on him is terribly disfigured and he is basically bound to and found working in a sideshow or like a freak show for lack of, I hate that word, but he's found working in a freak show as a sideshow attraction. And he's treated horribly. He's treated like an animal. And he is then manages to get out and he is taken to a place where he is shown kindness and compassion from people, including uh, the character played by Anthony Hopkins. And he learns how to trust people and that he can have a life outside of this basically this hell that he's been living in and it is a, a movie that will move you and it is sad it is disturbing it will make you angry it will make you happy it will make you believe in people it will make you realize how horrible people can be so there's a little bit of everything in this and I think it's such an important movie and I'm so happy that it came to the collection because I know for me, like I said, I was too young to watch it the first time and really appreciate what was going on. But as I watched it over the years and learned more about it and learned that it was a real man and his real story, I've really come to appreciate it. And I know in recent years, I have really grown to appreciate the magnitude of this story and why it is so important. And I'm so happy that it's come to the Criterion Collection. Um, this is from 1980. It's 123 minutes. It's in black and white and um, it is in English. And there's so many extras. It has a new 4K digital restoration. It has some Q&As. It has a 2001 documentary about the film. It also has a documentary excerpt about uh, John Merrick and his stories. So there's a lot of extras on here to, to check out. It's definitely worth a pick up. It comes in the slip box variant. We have the on the cover here, we have, hopefully you can see that, um, Anthony Hopkins character. And then on the back, we have this horrible, horrible sideshow guy. And then on the inside, we have, it's kind of plain. The disc is kind of plain. So we just have the disc. And then, of course, it comes with a, uh, a book of essays and stills from the movie. And that is a silhouette shot of John Merrick. And John Hurt and Anthony Hopkins are just fantastic. If you have not seen The Elephant Man, or even if you have, definitely, definitely can't recommend this enough. Definitely want to add it to your collection. And now this next one, I just got this this week. I've never seen it. Uh, popped it right in. I couldn't wait to watch it. I heard such great things about it. It is spine number 1057. It stars Forrest Whitaker, and it is called Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai, a film by Jim Jarmusch. And there is Forrest Whitaker. And Forrest Whitaker plays a hitman. He works for the Mafia. He does hits for the Mafia. And he has a very unconventional way of communicating with them. I'm not going to get into that because it will ruin the movie. Um, and something happens, there's a turn of events, and he finds out that the people that he has been working for and has been loyal to may be planning to kill him. But the thing is, is that his character, who goes by the name of Ghost Dog, he lives by this ancient Japanese text. It's a real text. Uh, it's a 300, it's over 300 years, uh, th over 300 years old. You can find it right on Amazon. I'll show you, the, they give you a little 
little sample book of it inside here. He lives by this text, and it's the way of the samurai. It's how they live, what they believe in, what the code that they adhere to, how they live, how they die, what's important to them. And he lives by this. He is a street smart guy, but he is also a very dedicated spiritual man. So if you can kind of put those two together and make him a mafia hitman, it's a pretty interesting character study. And Forrest Whitaker gives an amazing performance. He is so stoic and so focused. It's just so good. It's probably my favorite performance from him, tied with The Last King of uh, Scotland, where he plays Edie Amin. But if you haven't seen that one, check that one out too. But he is so, so good in this. And I love the soundtrack. It features uh, Wu-Tang Clan and RZA and some really cool songs. Actually, one of the special features on here is called Flying Birds, the music of Ghost Dog. So uh, a lot of people tend to like the, the soundtrack. This has a new 4K digital restoration, which was supervised and approved by uh, Jim Jarmusch. It has 5.1 uh, DTS HD Master Audio. It has a bunch of um, interviews, conversations, uh, um, video clips, things like that, of interviews with the actors, directors, cinematographers, all kinds of all kinds of things. So. Um, there's also a journey into the life of a samurai, which is a 2000 program on the making of the film, which should be really interesting, but tons of extras on this one that I just can't wait to dig into. And this one's from 1999. It's 116 minutes in color and in English. Now this is the book that I was telling you about, and I don't know how to say this. I think it's uh, Haga Curie. Hopefully you can see that. That is the book. If you look that up on Amazon, you'll see that it's an over 300 year old text from Japan. And these are some of the little sayings on the inside that he quotes through the movie and the quotes usually correspond with a scene that's coming up. So it, it's a pretty cool uh, way to present the movie. And here's the inside. And this is, it comes with a really nice book um, of stills and essays on the movie and there's one picture here it is this is a really cool picture of the character of ghost dog and if you can see that you will see how intense and how stoic a character he is and he is a badass so definitely check out ghost dog I can't give it a high enough recommendation I was if it wasn't so late when I was watching it I would have burned through all the special features, but it was probably like two in the morning and I was still up watching movies. Okay, so the next one here, this was an accidental recommendation from my uh, my friend Cinema Dave Media. We were doing a live stream where we recommended Criterion picks to anyone who was watching it. And this was one of his picks and I said, oh yeah, I have that, I just haven't watched it yet. I thought I had it, but I didn't. So thank you, Dave, because I went and I picked it up. This is spine number 823. It's an Arthur Hiller film. It's called uh, it's uh, called The In-Laws, and it stars Peter Falk and Alan Arkin. Alan Arkin plays this very straight-laced, very by the book, very uptight, very nervous New York City doc, uh, dentist. His daughter is marrying Peter Falk's son, and he's uh, Alan Arkin is upset because he's like, we haven't met the parents, we haven't met the father, we don't know anything about them. So they get this dinner together with it, so the parents can meet and they can meet the father. And immediately you notice that Peter Falk's character, it, it, something's off with him. He's weird, he's making phone calls in the basement, he's doing all kinds of things that feel shady. So he ends up showing up another day, a few days go by, he ends up showing up at uh, Alan Arkin's dentist office and he asks him if he can come help him with something and that is where our story takes us. And the next thing you know, Alan Arkin, this nervous, uptight, by-the-book dentist, is being dragged through the series of events, and we don't know what is real, what's a lie, uh, is, is Peter Falk's character crazy, is he telling the truth, he claims to work for law enforcement, but people are shooting at them, and they're running around, and they're maybe breaking into places, maybe they're not really breaking into places, you name it, it's going on. It is mad chaos, and it is so much fun. And this one, this kept me guessing until the very end, and that's why I don't want to tell you too much about it, except that it is so much fun. And Alan Arkin, as always, gives an amazing performance. I think he is this film. But when I thought about it, 
Alan Arkin is a fantastic actor. He is consistently amazing in everything you see him in. And a couple things come to mind that show his range. You have him here as this nervous, uptight dentist. And then think about um, uh, it, uh, Wait Until Dark, where he plays this terrible person who's breaking into a blind woman's apartment who's played by Audrey Hepburn. He is terrifying in that role. So you go from being this nervous uptight guy, he's also playing this terrifying guy that you'd never want to meet out in public. And then you have him in a film like Little Miss Sunshine, which he earned an Oscar for his best supporting role as a heroin addicted but lovable grandfather where he's hilarious. And he plays all these roles and he is masterful. He always brings his A game. But I think sometimes it flies under the wire because he's always in these like supporting roles, if you will. But the in-laws, he is just so good. So uh, the whole movie is great. And like I said, it's, it's from 1979. It's 103 minutes in color, in English. And it's just so much fun. It's a new 2K digital restoration. You have audio commentary from director Arthur Hiller, uh, Alan Arkin, and Peter Falk. Um, you have uh, uh, something called In Support of the In-Laws. It's a new interview program featuring Ed Bagley Jr. and uh, David Pimer. So that sounds cool. And then, you, of course, you have a booklet and, and whatnot, which I'll show you. But um, here you go. You have the inside and then <laughs> that's such a funny scene, the one they show there. Oh, it's just, this had me laughing the whole time. Laughing and guessing, because I had no idea what was going on either. And then you have the two of them standing out there at an airfield waiting for a plane that may or may not help them. And you can see there's some more stills and some writings on the picture. But if you want a really good comedy, uh, check out The In-Laws. So much fun. So, so much fun. So that is, again, spine number 823. Thank you, Dave, for that. And I'm glad I checked to see if I had it. This one I talked about in my last uh, video, but I talked about it on the Blu-ray that I had. I said I didn't realize it had a Criterion when I bought the Blu-ray. Here's the Criterion. It is spine number 794. It's called Inside Lewin Davis. It's a film that is written and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. And if you see, you have your cover there, and you see a little orange guy, that's a cat. And believe it or not, the cat is actually a main character in the movie. It's very cool. This one was written in 2013. It's 104 minutes in color and in English but it takes place in the 1960s in Greenwich Village, New York City. And Lewin Davis is a folk singer. He was part of a, a duet, but I'm not gonna tell you why that is no longer, but now he's a solo artist and he is trying to basically remake his career. And he's trying to get people interested in his music as a solo act. But in the meantime, his personal life is a disaster. He's sleeping on people's couches. Everybody's mad at him. His friends can't stand him. His ex-girlfriends can't stand him. He's running around, going from house to house, causing trouble and wreaking havoc everywhere he goes. He's just so unlikable. But yet you find yourself rooting for him the entire time, which to me says that this is a fantastically written story. It's such a good story. And I think I talked about it in my last one. The music in this is phenomenal. If you like uh, music and you like movies about music, definitely check this one out. And check out the soundtrack because it's really, really good. It's available on iTunes or on Amazon. Really good. So that's Inside Lewin Davis. And I think, did I show you the book? No. Oh, oh it's not much of a book. It's uh, We have the inside with our friend, the orange cat, who I wish I could remember his name. Why can't I remember that cat's name? Anyway, it just comes with a poster. And the poster has some credits on the back and some, it's like a little leaflet with some credits and things like that about the movie. But yeah, really, really great one. And another film they have in the collection is Blood Simple, which is really good too. Totally different tone, but excellent movie. And here's another one by uh, Jim Jarmusch. It's called Down By Law. It is spine number 166, so it's been in the collection for a while. It's from 1986. It's 107 minutes in, in black and white and English. So not too many subtitles this, this time around. Um, this one is, uh, so Fate brings together three hapless men, an unemployed disc jockey, a small time pimp, and a strong-willed Italian tourist in a Louisiana prison and a singular adventure ensues. Now this is a total blind buy for me just because I enjoy Jim Jarmusch. Here it is. And um, 
Like I said, this is from 1986, 107 minutes, black and white and in English. Uh, this has a newly restored digital transfer, which was supervised by the director, which always makes for a better experience uh, with the transfers. Um, it has an interview with Jarmish from 2002, an interview with the director of photography from 2002. It has footage from 1986 Cannes Film Festival. So this is loaded with special features. And uh, I could just imagine with Jim Jarmish, it's, it's going to be a good one. Everything he does is great. So I have yet to be let down by him. So this is the interior. And then again, we just really have a leaflet with credits and whatnot. And you have our main characters on the front there. But it sounds like it's quite an adventure and I'm sure it's, uh, it's going to be spectacular because everything he does is great. Now, this next one is a, it's a film by Ken Loach, and again, we were talking about, this was on Cinema Dave's live, uh, live stream, we were talking about a film called I, Daniel Blake, which is, which is another Ken Loach film, and that is about a, a man in the UK who is trying to navigate what is, what can only be referred to as the labyrinth of social services, and he is desperately in need of the help of social, social services. He is also entitled to them. But it shows us the real human side of what people go through when they are trying to navigate social services anywhere, no matter where you go, the UK, Canada, the United States, wherever you go. Uh, it's a nightmare. So I was talking about that film and then our friend Andre, who's a friend of a lot of the channels, said that this movie, Kess, is his favorite Ken Loach film. So of course I went right to check it out and I ended up picking it up because he always recommends the best movies. Uh, this is Spine number 561. It's from 1970. It's 111 minutes in color and in English. Now, this, the accolades on the back of this are amazing. It's, a, it's named one of the 10 best British films of the century by the British Film Institute. It is cinema's quintess quintessential portrait of working class Northern England. Billy, who's the young man, is a 15 year old minor's son whose close bond with a wild kestrel provides him with a spiritual escape from his dead end life. Kess brought to the big screen the socio-political engagement Loesch had established for his work uh, for the BBC and pushed the British angry young man film of the 60s into a new realm of authenticity using real locations and non-professional actors. His poignant coming-of-age drama remains the now legendary's director's most beloved and in influential film. I think this speaks volumes and I don't think there's much I can say to add to that because that is an amazing recommendation and commentary on what this film is. And it's got tons of special features. Oh, and in case you were wondering what kind of bird it is, it's a falcon. I looked it up to see what he was working with. I think you can see him on the front there. So the bird that he is is working with to, to uh, pass his time and kind of make a connection for his life is, is a falcon. Um, there's a newly restored digital transfer, uh, supervised and approved by the director, which is of course so important. And there is the Making Cast, a new documentary. So whenever you have a document documentary about the film, you know you're gonna get a lot of information that helps kind of bring everything together, any loose ends that you might have. But there's a lot of special features on this. I'm really looking forward to diving into this and giving you more information on it because I just loved I, Daniel Blake, and if this is even better than that, we're in for a treat. So this is the inside. You have the chapters on the one side and the disc. And then we have, of course, our booklet. Always love getting a booklet. And I think this last picture kind of speaks volumes about how this young boy feels about his life. And if you can see that, I think that kind of sums it up. But I'm really looking forward to this one. So I want to thank Andre for this recommendation because I think it's really going to be a good one. And of course, I had to add yet another edition of Parasite to my collection. And I'll explain to you why. This is spine number 1054, Parasite. Uh, this is from 2019, where we know it just cleaned up all the awards. It was a, it's a fantastic film. It is in color, but there's also a black and white variant on here. It has Dolby Atmos. It's in Korean with English subtitles. Now, my main reason for picking this up is because number one, 
I have seen many times, I'm thinking of Pan's Labyrinth in particular, where the transfer, where it may not be a true 4K transfer on Criterion, looks better than the, the 4K releases that they put out as standalone 4K releases. And this is a new uh, 4K digital master that is approved by the director. So if it's supervised and approved by the director, you know it's going to be good stuff. Um, it also comes with an Atmos soundtrack and the black and white version, which I can't wait to see how black and white changes the feel of the film because it really can make a difference when you see a film in color versus black and white. So I'm looking forward to that. They have conversations, they have interviews, they have behind the scenes documentary um, information. They have uh, all kinds of interviews. I think there's a radio spot on here too. Oh, there's a new program about the new Korean cinema movement featuring Bong and filmmaker Park Chan Wook. Uh, also has Cannes Film Festival press conference from 2019. So there's a lot of extras on here and a lot of the releases before this didn't really have any extras. I think they had some video commentary. That was it. And I was waiting for a Criterion release because I really wanted the special features. So this is a slipcase variant. It's kind of, uh, kind of simple inside. You have this cool image there and then we just have we have the two discs and the inside and then we have a really small leaflet just with some uh, a few notes and some thanks acknowledgments and uh, production credits things like that but it's very simple release it's not like it's got a big book or anything like that but I'm just really happy to have the option like I said of the black and white and also uh, finally have some special features so we can hear what the director has to say about his film because it's well deserving. Now this is one that is not a new pickup but it's one that I have wanted to suggest and recommend to you guys for a really long time and I figured why not now. It's spine number 301. It's called An Angel at My Table. It's a film by Jane Campion. Now Jane Campion actually, um, she is an award winning, an Academy Award winning filmmaker. She has another film in the collection called Sweetie, which I have and I haven't watched yet, but this one is a biopic about New Zealand's most accomplished and distinguished author, Janet Frame. And this is broken up into three, three definite segments. One is her in childhood, her childhood, which was a very impoverished li uh, life. Uh, they were very poor, they went without, and this shows just how they lived and how they survived. The second part is about, uh, like, uh, I'd say like teen years in there, upper teens, when she's kind of coming into her own, where she is misdiagnosed with schizophrenia. And this is all on the back here. Uh, in the end, the third, or not the end, but the third part is kind of where she's trying to put her life together and figure out where she wants to go and how she wants to do it. And all she ever wanted to do was be a writer. And this is her story of where she started and where she, where she ended up going. But what an amazing story. is very sad in some parts, but it is very good at the same time. It's very eye-opening. And I, again, I ran the gamut of emotions, just like a lot of these films. I ran the gamut of emotions when I was watching this one. Can't recommend it enough. Now, the three parts, they're about 45 to 47 minutes each. You can watch them as three separate pieces, but I just watched it all in one shot because I, I just couldn't turn it off. It was that good. It was so, so good. And if you see, she's known for having the wild red hair. And uh, they found three separate actresses to play her at the three different points in her life. This is from 1990. It's 158 minutes in color and in English. So let me just show you. It's pretty cool. Now the inside is a little plain. It's just a grassy field with the disc. But then we have a really cool, looks like a notebook with her uh, Janet Frames autograph on it. And then we just, there's not really stills, but there are a lot of writings on the movie, which um, I have gone over and I don't want to get into it, but they're, they're very interesting and uh, very, very enlightening. But this has a nice restoration. It has audio commentary from 2005 featuring uh, Jane Campion and um, actor Car one of the actors, Carrie Fox. It has a short documentary from 2002 about the making of this film. 
uh, some deleted scenes. And then they also have, from 1983, which I'm dying to listen to, an audio interview with author Janet Frame. So I can't wait to listen to her in her own words, but highly, highly recommend An Angel at My Table, spine number 301. If you haven't added it, check it out. And let's see, Make Way for Tomorrow. This was a recommendation from my friend John over at the Plaid X2. And he always recommends great films. That's the cover, and I agree with him. Love the color, love the coloring, love the artwork. Spine number 505. It's from 1937. It's 92 minutes, black and white, and in English. And basically what this is, is it's depression, error, depiction of the frustrations of family, aging, and the generation gap. Uh, an elderly couple has lost their house. The bank, have se the bank has seized their house and they are now forced to go and live with their adult children who may or may not want them there. And it sounds like this is going to be a real tearjerker and a real tough look at aging and change and trying to stay together as a family but not knowing exactly what's going to happen or how you're going to move forward with your life. And... Uh, I don't know. I think this is going to be a tough watch. I think it's going to pull up the heartstrings. And from what I hear, that's the case. So I am looking forward to watching this, but uh, any kind of these type of getting older films are starting to hit a little close to home for me. Not that I'm that old, but you know, you have to start thinking about the future. So I'm curious to see how they, how they approach this subject. So uh, we have the inside here. And then, of course, it comes with a really, this is a really nice booklet. I think it's like uh, like 40 pages of um, writings and uh, stills on the uh, movie. But I love this, uh, this artwork that they use, the couple, the elderly couple. And it's funny, it's not funny, it's just ironic. Um, the article that you open up to in the center is, We Laugh and Our Hearts Ache. So I think that kind of sums up what this movie is going to be about. But... I will definitely let you guys know how I enjoy uh, Make Way for Tomorrow because I hear wonderful things. And then we have a few, just a few more. We're going to wrap this one up. Uh, the next one is a recommendation from my friend. You know him and we love him. Nathan, Nathan Jones. I'm going to link him in the description. It is spine number 1053. It is Gregory Peck in The Gunfighter. Look at that artwork wonderful black and white artwork except for that splash of red on his shirt this one is from 1950 it's 84 minutes black and white and english and basically this is um the gunfighter foregoes the rough and tumble action in favor of uh exploration of guilt and regret that speaks to the an anxious soul of post-war america so this is kind of the end of what it sounds like. It's the end of that like gunslinger, Wild West type thing when people are actually having maybe regrets about the violence and the things that they've done, but they're still kind of being pulled by that past and maybe there's certain things that won't let them go. But I am interested to check this out and give you more information on it. Um, I love Gregory Peck. I do like Westerns. I was brought up on Westerns because that was my dad's jam. That's his thing. He loves Westerns. So uh, I am finding a new appreciation for them as I pick the ones out that I want to see for myself. Anything with Gregory Peck, I'm in. Um, and let me see, they have, oh, it's a new 4K digital restoration, they have some interviews, um, they have a new video essay, which is always great, about, from film historian J.E. Smith, and they have audio excerpts, um, from different interviews from, uh, writers and directors, so there's some pretty good, pretty good amount of, uh, special features on this one. And on the inside, we have, the inside's pretty plain, kind of looks like, uh, maybe saloon wallpaper. And then the disc and then we have a really nice it's a leaflet but you have this really nice artwork kind of looks like a painting again with the with the white and black with the splash of red so that looks really cool I'm just gonna uh, grab my last two because uh, my camera is beeping at me that it's gonna stop recording. So I just wanna get the last two in and then we're gonna wrap this one up. Okay, my friends, sorry about that one. Uh, my camera starts to beep at me at about 28 minutes and then it lets me know that it's gonna turn off and I don't wanna have to re-record this whole thing again because I find out I was talking for 10 minutes and you didn't hear anything. So we have two more to go and then we're gonna call this one a day and I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. 
Uh, this last one uh, was a this was a total blind buy. It's Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. It's called It Happened One Night. It's a Frank Capra production. It is spine number 736. It's from 1934. It's 105 minutes, black and white, and in English. And it says, opposites attract with magnetic force in this romantic road trip delight from Frank Capra. We have a spoiled runaway socialite, who's played by Claudette Colbert, and a man of the people reporter, played by Clark Gable, who is determined to get the scoop on her scandalous disappearance. So this sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I've heard good things about it. Um, and this is a film that came about when they were just starting to have films with sound. So I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this all comes together. But I've heard nothing but good things, and I just, I had to pick it up. So... Um, this has actually a, a brand new 4K digital restoration, um, and it says screwball comedy, a new conversation between critics Molly Haskell and, uh, an interview with Frank Capra from 1999. That should be really interesting. And then it says Frank Capra's American Dream, a 1997 feature length documentary about the director's life and career. So I think this will have some really great special features from what it sounds. Um, and let's see the inside kind of has this, uh, interesting artwork, almost noir feeling, but not. And then the, we have a really beautiful picture here on the leaflet, as you can see, hopefully you can see all that. So that's a really nice picture of, uh, Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert and um, I will get back to you as soon as I watch this and I will give you more thoughts on it but sound like it's going to be a really good one and like I said Clark Gable how can you go wrong with that one and this last one stars the one and only Humphrey Bogart and this was another recommendation for me it's called In a Lonely Place it is spine number 810 it's from 1950 it's 93 minutes it's black and white and in English um, Humphrey Bogart, uh, plays a gentleman who is the prime suspect in a brutal Tinseltown murder, and the only person who can supply an alibi for him is a seductive neighbor with her own troubled past. So, it says it's a suspenseful, noir-type thriller, uh, mixed with devastating melodrama. So, it sounds like it has a little bit of everything. And it says it's an uncompromising tale of two people desperate to find love and struggling with their own demons and each other's. This is one of the greatest films of the 1950s and a benchmark in the career of the classic Hollywood Nicholas Ray. So I am excited to check this one out and give you guys more information on it, more, a better, more in-depth review. Um, like I said, 1950, 93 minutes, black and white and in English, which I probably already said, but I'm so tired and I've done this video so many times, I don't remember what I said anymore. One thing I did want to mention that I forgot to say about it happened one night is this has a very um, uh, interesting list of accolades in that it was the first film to accomplish a very rare feat of sweeping all five major Oscar uh, categories. Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Director, and Best Screenplay. So that is It Happened One Night, which is another reason to pick this one up. So... Those are my pickups from the Criterion sale for this uh, November. Criterion, uh, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon pickups. Hopefully you found something or a few somethings that are interesting to you. If you have any questions or you have any comments, let me know. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me some comments, suggestions, recommendations. Let me know what you picked up or what you're looking forward to watching. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when I'm going to be back. Um, as you know, I have some 4K reviews to do. I have some Eddie Murphy films coming in for review. Uh, Blade is coming in for review. I have to start... I'm going to start... Um, my new uh, my new collection video series to update you on all my collections steelbooks 4Ks criterions things like that so we're going to get those started because i, I want to start them like probably around the end of december so that's what i have coming up and uh i want to say thank you i hope everybody had a really nice holiday who celebrates and i hope everybody's safe and and running around and picking up all the black friday things that you want to get but i want to thank you all for watching and have a great rest of the weekend and that's going to do it for me so for now that's a wrap.